Right, question number nine. <clears throat> from May, June, sorry, from October, November 2015, paper four, variant one. Um, this is again a question about number patterns and sequences. And very popular type of question actually comes up a lot. A lot of students asking for these type of questions. Now, tells us in this question that we have these three diagrams, diagram one, two, and three. Okay, and the areas of each of the first three diagrams are shown in this table. These diagrams are all made by one centimeter line. So these are squares. Okay, that's the square. We've got four squares here. So if they're one centimeter, the area of this is going to be one square centimeter. This will be four square centimeters. This is going to be nine square centimeters. So it's like you've got one square, then you're adding, keeping that one square and adding two more. Here you've got one square, then you've got three squares. That's four squares. So you're adding three squares and then another two, two more. So diagram four, okay, we can think about it. You're going to have another row added to the bottom of this, which will be the same length as this, the same number of squares as this. So you're going to add another number, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you're going to add five to the nine plus two more. Okay, so you're going to have 16. You should really recognize the fact that these are the square numbers. 1, 4, 9, 16. Those are the square numbers. Okay, so that's something that you should really recognize. So 1, 4, 9, and then 16. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. Okay, so in any case, that's going to be 16. All right, now, it says find in terms of N the diagram, the area of diagram N. Now, diagram N means the nth term, and we just worked out that the first term is 1 squared, the second term is 2 squared, the third term is 3 squared, the fourth term is 4 squared. The uh, you know 98th term will be 98 squared, so the nth term is going to be n squared. Okay, simple as that, very simple part, start to this question. Now part B tells us the first three diagrams okay same thing but this time it says the number of one centimeter lines needed to draw each of the first three diagrams are shown in this table each of the first three diagrams are shown in this table so you got for the first diagram you need four lines for the second diagram you need 13 lines for the third diagram you need 26 lines we want to find out how many need for the fourth diagram okay now there's a number of ways to do this one way would be to find the nth term but really with this only worth one mark that's not really necessary because the nth term here is not as straightforward as the last one we can just look at the way that this pattern increases so for example i can say when i get from 4 to 13 i have to add 9 9 plus 4 is 13. 13 to 26 i have to add 13. so in my mind i'm thinking hold on it looks like i have to increase by the amount that i add by it's going to increase by four so i'm thinking that all right so i have to now add 17. that's my got feeling however just to make sure let's just actually just add a few more lines to this and just to just to make sure that we're we have the right pattern if if the answer i predict is going to be is comes out from doing just making this little diagram then we know for sure that we are correct in our assumption about the pattern okay so I'll just continue that a bit I'm just to make some lines here they're not the same exactly the same they're, you know it's close enough I'm just trying to do a rough sketch you don't even have to use straight lines I mean you don't have to use a ruler it's just a sketch now okay it's not that good but still um, what we can say here is that we've got up to now we've got 26 lines drawn okay All right, so I've got to now add these lines to that so that's 26 that's 27 that's 28 okay then you've got 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 so by continuing the diagram making it diagram 4 
right you see that we get 43 and is that the same thing that I get here 26 plus 17 this is 43 so I'm just making sure that I'm correct okay so you can see every time you have got to add four more than you added before okay so that's a much quicker way of doing it than finding the nth term now, part of question number two again it says in which diagram are 118 lines of length one centimeter needed and here we could find the nth term but it's only worth one mark and it looks like you know the number is going to increase quite rapidly so I personally think it's been better for us to just continue this pattern until we reach 118 so for example we added four more we can add another so instead of increasing by 17 it's going to increase by 21 sorry by yeah by um, 21 that's right 21 four more than 17 so 43 plus 21 so the fifth term is going to be 64 okay and then it's going to increase by four more than 21 which is 25 okay that would be the sixth term that gives you 89 and then it's going to increase by four more than 25 which is 29 which gives you the seventh term which is going to be 118 so you can see very quickly we got to 118 okay so that's the seventh term all right so that's far easier than finding the nth term here okay it's far easier than finding the nth term this would be like a quadratic which would be in the form of um, 2 n squared which increase the second will have a difference of four we'll come to doing quadratic sequences like that in one of the other questions that um, will come up okay now part C um, the total and bold type number of one centimeter lines needed to draw both diagrams one and two is 17. And you can see that from here. If I want to draw, draw diagram one and two, I need 17 lines altogether. So this is what this formula here tells us. The total number of one centimeter lines needed to draw all of the first n diagrams is given this by this formula. So if I wanted to find um, the number of lines in total, I need to draw the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth diagram. I would have to put n equals 5 into here. Okay, so this formula tells us about the total number of lines needed to draw the first n diagrams. So we've got to find the value of a and b. Okay, now we can do this by using two bits of information. There's two unknowns, a and b. So we can use, we can use two different um, scenarios. We can say, for example, let's think about drawing the first diagram. Just to keep the number small. So the first diagram, okay, and n equals 1. If you look at our table, we remember it's the first diagram. We need four lines, don't you? First time we need four lines. One, two, three, four. Okay, it tells us that in the table. So we can say that when n equals 1, then I can replace 1 instead of n in this formula, and I'll have 2 thirds times 1 cubed plus a times 1 squared plus b times 1, and that should give me 4. And if I simplify this, I'm going to have 2 thirds plus a plus b. So I have two thirds plus a plus b equals four. Now that will lead me to a formula a plus b is four minus two thirds, which is three and one third. Three and one third gives me ten over three. Okay. Um, if you don't like fractions in formulas in in these equations, then you could even do this. You can say three a plus three b equals ten. I can call that equation 1. Okay, here we've got, I've just multiplied both sides by 3 to get rid of the fractions. And then we say when n equals, for example, 2, for the first two diagrams, diagram 1 and 2, when I put n equals 2 into this formula, the result's going to come out of 17. As you can see that from the table as well, that to draw the first two diagrams, I need 4 plus 13, which is 17 straight lines of 1 centimeter. So when n equals 2, this formula should give me 17. So I can use that now to form another equation. So 2 thirds times 2 cubed plus a times 2 squared plus b times 2 should give me 17. So this is going to be 8 times 2, 16 over 3 plus I'm going to have 4a plus I'm going to have 2b gives me 17. Okay, so I have um, if I multiply everything by 3, I'll have 16 plus 12a plus 6b equals 51. And I'll have 12a plus 6b 
equals 51 minus 16, which is 35. So now I have two equations. I can solve them simultaneously. These two equations I can solve simultaneously. So I have 3a plus 3b equals 10, and I have 12a plus 6b equals 35. I want to make one of the coefficients the same. Let's say we make the b's the same. So I take this equation 1 and multiply it by, by 2. So I'll get 6a plus 6b equals 20. And if I subtract these two equations, I'll have 12a minus 6a is 6a. 6a minus 6a disappears. 6b minus 6b disappears. And that's equal to 20, 35 minus 20, which is 15. So I can say a is equal to... 15 over 6, which simplifies, divide by 3, that gives me 5, divide by 3 gives me 2. So A is equal to 5 over 2, which is 2.5. And now I need to find what B is. Now I know that from here I can use this A plus B equals 10 over 3. So B is going to be 10 over 3 minus A. Okay, so it's 10 over 3 minus 5 over 2 okay so when I subtract these fractions you can make them both over 6 so this is 20 over 6 minus 15 over 6 which gives me 15 over 6 okay 15 over 6 okay which gives me if you divide by hold on that's 20 over divide multiply by 2 multiply by Three. Not 15 over 6, sorry. 20 minus 15 gives me 5 over 6. So of course, I was just testing you to see who spotted that. So B is equal to 5 over 6, and A is equal to 5 over 2, and there we have our answer. Okay? And there we go.